Hello, welcome to this video. Now today I'm going to show you how to log data to Google Sheets using a service called Tembu. So in this video we're going to go over the wiring, what Tembu is, um, the Google Developer Console and data logging in general. Now the thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to get some sensors on the analog and digital pins of an Arduino Yun. The Arduino Yun I'm using because um, it's got internet connectivity which makes it easy to do something like this. And I wanted to do it for Arduino over in Raspberry Pi because I'm a lot better, I'm a lot more comfortable using Arduino in general and I think it's better for prototyping electronics despite it being more expensive. So this might be useful in many situations having um, an Arduino data logger giving you data to a spreadsheet. Um, if you've got a greenhouse, you might need to monitor whether your plants need watering with a soil moisture sensor, whether you um, need to increase or decrease the temperature, the humidity, just to see if you've got the right condition for the plants you've got in the greenhouse. So what this project will do is it will take readings of different things, maybe the temperature, humidity and soil moisture in some of the plants. It will take these readings and then put them onto a spreadsheet that you can access from anywhere because it's online. Um, and then you could also, if you wanted to, to expand this project, which might, I might do this in a future video, you could make it send a text message if some of the readings are out. So let's say the temperature got to an insane amount and the plants are going to wilt. You could have um, a line of code that says maybe send a text to your phone if the temperature is over 40 degrees or something like that. But for now, we're just going to put these values onto a spreadsheet. Um, other examples where this might be useful, maybe a fish tank, um, a kitchen where you need to monitor gases or smoke. There's loads of examples. But a few sensors you might want to include are light, temperature, pH, turbidity, soil moisture, humidity and gas. Um, now if you don't know what turbidity is, I didn't know this before, it's a measure of how murky the water is, so that could be in a fish tank to measure whether when, when the water needs to be cleaned. Um, but there are some common ones that you might want, but with loads, any sensor will work with this. So let's go over Tembu. It's a paid service and it's very expensive. That's a massive drawback of Tembu. So there are some alternatives, including... I don't know how to pronounce that first one. Sparkfront and Grove Streams. I've never used any of them, actually, but I've heard that they're the best alternatives to Tembu. But anyway, Tembu is a paid service and allows you to do cool things with the Arduino Yun. You can, a few things I've done using it as a mobile phone to send texts and calls. You can use it to log data to an SD card or to Google Sheets or something like that. Because it's got an SD card slot, you can control it wirelessly and you can read live sensor data. Um, and this, this is an example. So you can put the values onto a Google spreadsheet, pretty easy. Or you can actually read the data from an analog pin on Tembu and it gives you graphs. Okay, so time for the wiring. All you need is your Arduino Yun and three analog sensors. It doesn't matter which ones, as long as you have an analog sensor on analog zero, analog one, and analog three. I'm using an LDR temperature sensor and a barometric pressure sensor. Okay, now you've wired three sensors up to the Arduino's analog pins. You need to head over to Tembu and make an account. You can make an account for free and get 30 days on a free trial, but after 30 days you can't use it. It's not going to charge you ask you for, for credit card details or anything like that. And then once you've made an account, go to hover over your username, go to account info, um, applications, and then it says account, application, key, copy all of this into a sticky note because you'll need this later for the header file we're going to create in the program. Okay guys, this part is the boring bit where we've got to configure all the APIs and stuff. So type into, in fact no, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. Go to console.developers.google.com and I can leave a link in the description if you're too lazy to type it out. Uh, on your Google account, or you can make a new Google account. Search into here on the library Sheets, Google Sheets API. Now, I've remade one, but in the corner here it'll say create a project, it'll be fairly self-explanatory. And then go to your credentials, uh, create credentials, OAuth client ID, it'll say you need to configure the consent screen, go to the consent screen and type in a product name. I'm just going to call mine Greenhouse. Click save. You might have to go back to that in a min. And then you can select a, a client ID. Now, this needs to be web application for now. Uh, you can give it a name, so 
I'll call it Web Client 1 because I'm creative. And then just click Create. Well, right then, it's going to give you a client ID. It's also going to give you a client secret. Okay, then, so once you have got to this point and you've got Web Client 1 or whatever you've called it underneath OAuth 2 client IDs in the credentials part, just click on it. And then you've got this thing here authorized redirect URLs. So in here, you'll need to put this. I'll put it in the description. And you need to put in here your Tembu account name um, and get rid of the fill braces. So mine is pie and chips. So just type that in there and then click save. Okay, then next go back to Tembu and I'll leave a link in the description to this website, this page you need to go to. It's called the uh, Initialize OAuth Courier. So you need to get your client ID, which you will find uh, in credentials. So get your client ID and then go to this page, put it in here. The scope you need to put this https spreadsheets.google.com slash feeds and then in the out press generate code click this url and then it'll say choose an account to continue with Tembu live allow it to you and manage spreadsheets in google drive now there's one final bit you need to go to the final OAuth courier and i'll leave a link to that in the description enter your client id and client secret we haven't used client secret yet that is um, here. Get your client secret and client ID, put them into here, and then callback ID, which we got from the previous thing that we ran, initialize it off. So get your callback ID, um, run this, and we've got an access token. Now we will need this, so you might want to save this on that sticky note that you made earlier. Okay, then, so you'll now want to go to Google Sheets which is an online spreadsheet tool and it's free so you know it's very good it's um, basically an online version of Office this Google Drive um, Office platform and you'll need to make three spreadsheets or a spreadsheet for each of your sensors and then just call it after the sensor name so pressure, humidity, temperature and then when you go on to it you want to create two columns on the first two columns of the spreadsheet so you can't create them here, you've got to be here one for time, one for sensor value. Okay. Once you've made them spreadsheets, I'm, I'm now going to show you an example that just uses one, um, a bit of code that just uses one sensor, and then I'm going to show you a modified version of this code that uses three. So first thing, tembuaccount.h. You'll need to put in here your Tembu account info. I did tell you to note this down earlier. Um, but just go to Tembu activity no sorry uh, account info applications and here's your info so you want to put this into the spread into the code your if this is your first Tembo account your app key name will just be my first app so you don't need to worry about that and then key don't click regenerate if you've already put it into a spreadsheet, obviously. There you go. Go back onto the send data to Google Spreadsheets. Um, and then just go down to here. So you'll, this is the bit where you need to input the stuff from Google. So you need to go to your developer console and input your client ID. So that's... So let's go to here and get your client ID and your client secret. Okay, and then your OAuth refresh token. This is from the finalised OAuth courier that we just ran. Um, of 
pull back out of yeah. This bit here. No, it's not this bit here, sorry, access to. Copy this. And put this into that. Okay, now this here is your spreadsheet ID. This isn't as clear to find as the others. But if you go to your spreadsheet that you want to use first, my old refresher, it's this little bit in the URL. So copy that and put that into the spreadsheet ID. Um, and then I will just quickly talk you through this code. So this, these are just all variables that are storing the data that Tembu needs to access these spreadsheets that you've created. Um, in the void setup, we are initialising the bridge. Now the bridge is on the Arduino Unix. The Arduino has got two processors, so it's got a Linux processor and it's got an Arduino processor. The bridge is the thing that combines both of these that can work together. So for this we need the Arduino processor to read the sensor data that's going to be on the spreadsheet and the Linux to actually put it on the spreadsheet with Tembu. So we need the bridge. So it's just going to print the serial monitor initialising the bridge, bridge.begin and then when it's finished it'll just print the serial monitor done. Okay, that's fairly simple. Um, so this, this just makes it run once every 60 seconds. It prints getting the sensor value. Um, and then we've got a, a variable here to store the sensor value. And this is a function get sensor value. If we go down to what get sensor value actually is here, it's return analog read A0. So it's going to read the analog pin A0 on your Arduino. Um, this is using the append values courier library. So this is uh, the process object to send the courier request to Tembu. And then it's going to do all the stuff to do with credentials so that Tembu can actually be used in this case. Um, finding the correct Tembu library to run. And then initialising all these uh, client ID, client secret refresh token. Um, this is the thing that actually puts it onto the spreadsheet. And then if the turn code is zero, that means it's been a success. Okay then, because I do not have my Arduino on me at the moment, I'm just going to show you what I did earlier. This is temperature sensor Google Sheets document, and I've just got loads of different sensor values over time. Okay then. This, is, this time is in seconds, not minutes, I think, because it's all a bit weird, isn't it? But anyway, um, this is the sensor value that I've got, and the time looks a bit irregular because I turned it off and on at different points when I needed it to record a sensor value. You may have also noticed that the sensor value isn't converted to a readable figure, but you know you can convert it to be actually in degrees or whatever. Okay, I'm now going to show you the code that I've made. Um, well, made based on the example. Um, of how you can have multiple sensors at once. Now let me get this straight, it's not the most efficient code and it goes against you know the programming principle don't repeat yourself. But um, there are ways of simplifying this and I might put on the blog a more efficient version of this code but this works for now so I'm just going to show you this um, because I haven't got time to write it like much better. So all of this is the same. I'll oh, forget with this. There's only three sensors. Right, apart from, we've got, I told you earlier that we've got three different spreadsheets. One spreadsheet for each different sensor. We've got a spread, so I've got a spreadsheet for temperature, humidity, and pressure. So you need to get, as I showed you earlier, the IDs for these in the URLs, and then make two more constants, one for spreadsheet ID 2 and one for spreadsheet ID 3. This is the same, but I have made it on an LCD instead of serial monitor because I'm going to be putting this in a greenhouse or like in a remote location where I won't be able to connect a computer up to see the serial monitor. Um, and then I've got three different functions. I've got a function for each different sensor. I've got temperature sensor, pH sensor, turbidity sensor. Okay. In temperature sensor, I've basically copied and pasted all of that code from the example, so it runs that every minute. And then I've got the pH sensor runs this and LDR. And it just runs from one after the other.